All right, welcome back to the Friday Show, presented by Naira Betts. I'm Scott Jagow, along with Ray Pollock. Glad to have you with us. Coming up, we'll talk about Eclipse Awards. But first, let's start with the Breeders' Cup 2018. It's in the books. And I must say, Ray, it doesn't always happen this way, but the big horses delivered in this Breeders' Cup. What stood out to you? Well, there were th three races that stood out to me. One was Monomoy Girl in the Distaff, Enable winning the turf. But, but I thought Accelerate's victory in the Classic was the, the most important race of the two days. And it, a couple things. One, it ended John Sadler's long streak of futility in the Breeders' Cup, his first win after 40-some starts. And it put Accelerate into the Horse of the Year discussion. Well, I, I will go with the moment that we all anticipated with Enable in the turf, and it was a duel to the finish with Magical to Tori taking her outside where the turf was better. Oh my gosh, at that moment, the crowd was electric. I'll never forget that, so I'm gonna make that my vote. But you mentioned Horse of the Year as a conversation now. Who gets your vote? Well, Accelerate had a tremendous year, winning all year long. But when I think of you know singular achievements, what Justify did, winning, go, winning a Triple Crown, starting the year as a non-race three-year-old, running the table, winning the Triple Crown, unfortunate injury after the Triple Crown had to be retired. Um, I kind of put things in historical perspective and, and you look back uh, at 1978, the year Affirmed won the Triple Crown, he was horse of the year. Uh, there was a horse that year named Exceller who had a, an exceptional campaign winning, I think it was six grade one races. Uh, he didn't even get a championship because Seattle Slough was voted older champion. Affirmed won the Triple Crown. He did not win a grade one race after the Belmont. He continued to race, but he didn't win. So I, I think the Triple Crown is a, is a unique achievement. It took 37 years to break the slump or the, the, the drought uh, from Affirmed to American Pharaoh. Just because we've seen it happen twice in a few years, we shouldn't penalize the horse that did it the second time. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to penalize Justify. I don't think he's getting any penalties. Uh, if he doesn't get uh, a horse of the year, I just don't want to be stuck too far in the past uh, and things evolve, sports change. It might be that we're in a different era right now. We'll see going forward. He has his Triple Crown trophy. His connections have that. Uh, it was a great accomplishment. He, they'll have the breeding revenue they'll get for whisking him off to the breeding shed, but he's not getting my vote for horse of the year because of what Accelerate did. It, if Accelerate hadn't won the Breeders' Cup Classic, I probably wouldn't be saying this, but he did. And he had he was up against it. He had the outside post. He had all this pressure coming in, you know, with the whole Sadler thing. And he won five grade one races. He beat older the entire year. He had a one second out of seven finishes. I mean, seven starts, uh, winning, you know, six races. And so I just, I found his accomplishment worthy of a horse of the year and you know justifies right there with his triple crown but if you have to weigh it i'm, I'm going to go with the horse that finished the year the way he accelerated okay so we have other categories that some of them are slam dunks i mean accelerate and justify will get eclipse awards in their respective three-year-old and older right. categories game winner certainly is going to have been a two-year-old colt three-year-old philly is absolutely going to be monomoy girl who had a phenomenal year along with accelerate um how about older female that one's tough. Yeah, this you know this is a weak year for older females, and, and when you think of some of the great years we've had recently with Beholder and Songbird, and you know, it's just it's, it seems cyclical in our business. But uh, I would vote for Abel Tasman. It's not a not a not with a lot of conviction, but I thought her win in the personal ends and and she you know she beat Elate before that. Uh, I, I just think that um, I, I think she did enough to to win. Yeah, I, I, I'm, having, I'm having a hard time voting for her. I, this is a tough category because there isn't an accelerate. If there was an right. accelerate here, I, you know, it'd be pretty much a slam dunk. There isn't. The, the, the opposition for Abel Tasman is Unique Bella, who was three for four, same number of grade one wins, and she had a second. It etched in my memory right now is Abel Tasman finishing 11th in the distaff, and before that finishing five fifth out of, I think, of six horses in the Zenyatta Stakes. 
those were her last two performances. So I'm going to give vote, vote for Unique Bella. Yeah, I, in, in a case like that, I think you shouldn't punish or you shouldn't – just because somebody stays in training and isn't at their best – you know, I'm I'm willing to overlook bad races if in in a case where there's really no clear standout. Yeah, as I said, if there was a yeah an accelerate here, it would be uh, you know because I don't I'm not I'm not trying to punish Abel Tasman, but uh, if I look the two records are pretty similar and and Unique Bella was three for four with a, with a second and we have performances that were pretty bad with Abel Tasman. Okay, uh, two year old filly. Uh, for me, that's easy. That's jaywalk. There'll be a lot of people that think newspaper of record should get it off her, you know, juvenile Phillies turf performance, which was sensational. But this is America. Dirt racing still should get the advantage when all <laughs> things are, are are equal. Yeah, this is America. <laughs> Thank you. We're still sticking to our dirt. Uh, I, I actually agree. I went in thinking I would vote for newspaper of record. Uh, just thinking, you know, I, I, I'm impressed by her. I was impressed by her. But then I went back and looked at their record side by side, and Jaywalk had just as good a record. She was four for five. Newspaper of record was three for three. They both had combined 20 lengths in victory. So, yeah, I'll lean toward Jaywalk just on paper how she did. Um, turf male. <laughs> this one's – can we just skip a year on this one? You, you think yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I, just kind of by default, I look at High Happy. Who? High Happy won two grade one races this year. Uh, I think one in Florida, one in New York. He raced all year. I'm tending to lean toward horses when, when everything else is equal. Lean toward horses that raced all year, uh, that had more than two or three starts. And certainly you could make a case for maybe Expert Eyes, the horse that won the Breeders' Cup mile. Uh, but one race a horse had a nice campaign in europe he comes over here he wins one race and he should get the eclipse award over a horse that raced all 12 months i, I just i can't see doing that well you could go a lot of different ways in the turf male category you could go with stormy liberal who won the turf sprint i like an outside the box candidate though uh and yoshida yoshida won a grade one race uh on the turf earlier in the year against older horses then he went to uh royal ascot and performed very well, finishing fifth in the Queen Anne Stakes. Then he comes back here and he wins on the dirt in the Woodward, a grade one race, uh, and competes and does very well in the Breeders' Cup Classic, finishing fourth. Three of his five starts were on the turf, so I consider him part of this category. He's going to get my vote. Well, there are no rules in Eclipse Award voting. You could you could vote for a horse as outstanding turf male if he won an, a nothing but green cheese. But I, I can't look at the Woodward as a factor because that was a dirt race. It would be like saying you know Catholic boy deserves a shot because he won the Travers. Um, you could you can vote for him for that reason, but it's not a turf race. Yes, that's true, and it's also uh, you could also say that uh, you know Justify broke the curse of Apollo by not racing at age two, but what he did at age two. Does has nothing Correct. to do with this year's Eclipse Award. Okay, uh, what are we? Uh, turf female. Well, turf female is an easy one, right? Enable. Eh. But I say, I say, not so fast, my friend. Enable came over here. She, she, she's a champion. You can't win the Arc de Triomphe twice in a row and not be a sensational horse. But one race, come on. I, I look at Sister Charlie. She had a, she had a campaign and she won a breeder's cup race i'm going to give it to sister charlie not because she's a better horse but because she's a more deserving champion yeah i i agree uh four four grade one wins for sister charlie you know and then she the breeder's cup comes up and she comes out of nowhere and wins that too uh and abel's performance was sensational and stands alone i think at this breeder's cup but in terms of the eclipse awards we agree here and that I, i think there needs to be a campaign I also like, you know, we talked about that previous award. I like to put things in context. So when you're talking about, you know, you can't consider the Woodward or whatever for Yoshida, I'm just putting it in context around him. Uh, what, what happened around him this year? You know, what else was going on? And so to me, that's part of the storyline. And I think it's hard to have a storyline when you only have one race. So uh, let's ask, let's ask you what you think about this should horses who only have one race say in the breeders cup be considered for end of year eclipse awards we have a poll on our website 
pollockreport.com. Any other thoughts, Ray? Well, there's one other division we didn't talk about, a couple actually, the uh, the sprint divisions. And I think those are tough too. Oh yeah. Roy H won the Breeders' Cup sprint, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say maybe Stormy Liberal should be considered. Uh, had a good campaign, won the Breeders' Cup uh, for the second straight year, and it was on turf, but it's sprinter. I know this is America, but <laughs> uh, turf sprinters are becoming more important, and I, you know, it's a tough category. I'd go with Stormy Liberal. Yes, Roy turf H. sprinters are people too. That's um, right. <laughs> I'm leaning towards Roy H though. Uh, his, you know, stack up the resumes. His is very good. And then in the female sprint category, it's either probably Marley's Freedom or the horse that ended the year with the florist, Shamrock Rose, who won the Philly and Mare Sprint. I would lean towards her for this category. Yeah, I, I you know, pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Friday Show, presented by Naira Betts. We'll talk to you next time.